experiments in Kubernetes. The development time, obviously, we're going to be writing unit tests for our application. We want to make sure that our application is behaving the way we would expect it to behave. Now, no matter which language we use to develop our application, we have our favorite unit testing frameworks. It's going to let us write our unit tests easily and execute them easily and get results from them easily. Now, let's say we're taking this application we've developed and deploying it in Kubernetes. Don't you want to test the deployed version of the application? Of course we do. This is where experiments come in. So we will simply use the term experiments as a short code for tests that you run for your deployed and running applications. That's what an experiment is. And we're going to be looking at how you can easily author these experiments and how you can easily execute them and also how you can uh, consume results back from these experiments. So I mentioned, I'm sure you're familiar with different types of experiments. So the simplest type of experiment is load testing your application. So let's say it's a service that you're deploying. Obviously, you want to make sure that it can handle realistic loads and uh, its latency and error related properties are okay, even in the midst of uh, uh, real world load conditions. That's a load test experiment. Um, you, let's say you also have a new version of your application. You may want to dark launch it or canary it. So you are either sending a copy of the end user traffic to the application to the new version, or maybe you're sending a portion of the traffic to the new version and measuring how well it's performing. That's an example of a dark launch of a canary experiment. How about resiliency? So um, maybe a part goes down in the cluster, or maybe a node goes down in the cluster, and you want to see how the application is holding up in the midst of these instabilities. This is where chaos testing comes in. So chaos is a way to inject this type of instability in a very controlled manner into the infrastructure and see how your application is performing. That's an example of resiliency testing and resiliency experiment. And finally, there is, of course, A-B testing. So maybe you're deploying a machine learning model, and maybe the machine learning model is recommending books or talks or news articles or whatever. And you want to make sure that you're getting new users. You want to make sure that you're increasing your revenue. So essentially, A-B testing is all about picking the best version of your application with respect to the business metrics. So that's an A-B testing experiment. So in this talk, we are going to be focusing on a couple of very simple experiments, and I can give you pointers to other experiments also, but we're going to be focusing on the load test experiment and also the resiliency experiment, the chaos testing experiment. And I'm going to be demonstrating a version of these experiments. We're going to be using a couple of open source tools. The first tool is called Iterate. It's an open source tool for Kubernetes experimentation and release engineering and release optimization. The second tool is called Litmus. Uh, this is a CNCF incubating project and it enables all sorts of uh, chaos engineering and chaos injection experiments. All right, so all the demos that I'm gonna be showing today, they're all off of our public iterate.tools URL so you should feel free to just try it out to your own convenience. These demos should probably take a couple of minutes end to end when you uh, run them in your cluster. Okay, so the first demo is the load test experiment. We are simply gonna be load testing an HTTP service inside the Kubernetes cluster, and hopefully it will introduce us to the nuances of experimentation. And as part of the load test, of course, we want to make sure that the application handles a given load and it's able to meet its performance requirements and performance objectives. That's the idea of the experiment. So in detail, this is how the schematic of the experiment actually looks. 
Um, we are going to launch an experiment. First of all, we have a Kubernetes cluster, and we have our HTTP service running inside the cluster. And we are going to launch an experiment this to run inside the cluster. And the experiment actually has three different tasks going on. The first task is simply checking if your application is ready. So if your application resources are not available, or if it's not ready, there's no point in starting an experiment. So it's a basic check that it's going to do. And the second task is going to generate the load for the service, and it's going to collect various types of metrics based on the responses from the service, latency metrics, error metrics, and so on. And the final task is going to validate the service level objectives. These are the performance objectives that we want the experiment to satisfy. It's really a simple experiment, and we're going to use the Iterate CLI to launch the experiment and also gets the results back from the experiment. View a report of the experiment and also assert various conditions on the results of the experiment. All right, so let's jump in. Uh, as I said, you need, oh, I did not, sorry, I knew something like this was gonna happen. Let me get my Docker started. The first thing you need is a Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going to get myself a local Kubernetes cluster for this experiment. Uh, but while the cluster is booting up, let's take a look at what this experiment, what we're gonna do in this experiment. So first thing, we're going to create the cluster. Then we are going to deploy the application, the HTTP service inside the cluster. Um, in order to do the experiment, you also need the Iterate CLI. I already have that CLI installed in my local machine. It's a simple brew install, or if you prefer, you can use one of the binaries that are available to install the binary on your machine and run the same experiment. And then we are going to launch the experiment. And this is how the experiment launch actually looks like. Hopefully you see how simple it is. I said the experiment has three tasks, those are the named tasks out there. So Iterate actually provides a set of pre-built and pre-defined tasks for you. And I'm using three of those tasks, a task for checking readiness, a task for generating load and creating metrics, and a task for assessing the metrics. And finally, we are also going to do the assertions and reporting from the experiments like I mentioned. All right, so I got myself a cluster, I think. So we have a cluster, and let's go ahead and deploy our service. It's a simple HTTP bin service. You're probably familiar with the sample application. It's just useful for testing and demos. We created the deployment, and we exposed the deployment of the service inside the cluster. Okay, so now let's go ahead and launch the experiment. So as part of the launch process, Iterate actually fetches, under the covers, it's fetching a Helm chart and instantiating a Helm chart, which is how the experiment is packaged and delivered to the cluster. That's what Iterate is doing under the covers. So we are launching the, uh, the uh, load testing experiment. It's launched and it's running right now. Uh, but let's take a look at the parameters that we supplied. So not only did we say what tasks we want to run as part of the experiment, we also parameterized those tasks, and here's how we did it. We said we want to check readiness of this deployment. We want to check readiness of this service. So for a service, it's simply checking if the service exists or not, and for the deployment, it's checking if it exists and if it's available. So these are all baked in as part of the task. And for load testing, I simply gave it a URL. This is obviously a cluster local URL that, I give, that I've given it. And, but there are a whole lot of other parameters that you can use to customize this task. For example, this task also accepts things like headers that you can use as part of the queries it's sending, the number of requests you want to send, the duration of the test, the uh, rate of the requests, and also the number of parallel connections that you want to use, all sorts of things that you would use normally in a load testing experiment. I just use the default values for 
And I'm also saying I want to assess these SLOs. I want the mean latency to be within 50 milliseconds, and I do not want any errors. Those are the SLO conditions that I would like the application to satisfy. Okay, by now the experiment must have finished. Go ahead and check it. Very good, so I just asserted that the experiment completed and the experiment ran without any failures and all the SLOs are satisfied and looks like all those conditions are met, so we are good. The experiment ran and the application is working as we would expect. So let's also take a look at a report of the experiment. You can get a text report, HTML report. Let's get an HTML report. So the experiment, once again, saying the status of the experiment, it did its job. Uh, all the SLOs are satisfied for the application. The mean latency, which we specified, should be within 50 milliseconds, is within 50 milliseconds. And it's also giving us a nice histogram of the latencies. Um, and as you can see, the, all the latencies are well behaved, and this is how we wanted the application to be. Okay. And also a little cleanup of this experiment to set ourselves up for the next experiment. So that's really it about the HTTP load testing experiment. Hopefully you got a sense of how easy it was to author the experiment, launch the experiment, and get results out of the experiment. And it's also very, very easily configurable. You can just change its parameter settings to suit your application and your requirements. Now I mentioned HTTP load test. Maybe you're running a gRPC service and you can load test a gRPC service also using a very similar experiment. The only variation here is that instead of using an HTTP task, you will use a gRPC task, which does the gRPC load generation and also um, uh, metric uh, creation. And once again, you can customize it. You can customize the load profile. You can customize the call data, call metadata, everything that you want. Okay, so let's move on to our next experiment. So this is really the main experiment that I wanted to highlight. This is a resiliency experiment, right? And here is one practical use case for an experiment like this. So we all know that the same application configured, its dominant configuration is different, then it can have a very big impact on the resiliency of the application. So here is an experiment to check a couple of different deployment configurations and decide which one is working, which one is more resilient. That's the idea of this experiment. And uh, here is the setup of the experiment. Again, we are going to have a HTTP service. That's our application. If there is a service, there's a deployment, and the, de the deployment has its pods. And we are going to periodically kill pods of this application. That's the chaos we are going to be injecting. And we're going to do that using a litmus chaos experiment. So this is really, I said, an experiment but this is really a joint experiment. This is two experiments in one. One of them is the litmus chaos experiment, and that's what is gonna inject this pod kill chaos. Once in a while, periodically, it'll just go and get your application pod, kill it. That's its job. That's going to be running concurrently, and that experiment is your load test experiment. It's very similar to the one that we ran. And the only difference is that we are now going to be doing a load test in the midst of this chaos injection. So we are gonna be checking if your application is resilient even in the midst of this pod chaos that we are injecting through the litmus experiment. That's the whole idea here. So, spoiler alert, we are gonna use two different configurations. We are gonna use an unscaled version of the app, so just one pod. And we're also going to scale up the application and retry the experiment, so two or three pods. And without, you know, no surprises here, the unscaled app is not going to be resilient because of the pod failures, and the scaled app is going to be resilient because it has more replicas. Of course, this is just a demo scenario, but really there is no limit to the kind of chaos that you can inject and the kind of configuration testing that you can do. The idea here is just to demonstrate 
the concurrent uh, experimentation using litmus and iterate simultaneously. All right, so let's jump into this experiment. A few things as a setup for this experiment. Cluster. I need an application that I am yet to get. I need litmus in my cluster, so I already have litmus installed in the cluster. Litmus also has a server cluster side component which is going to orchestrate these chaos experiments. I already have that installed in my cluster. So let's go ahead and see our application. Once again, a very similar deployment that I'm creating. And once again, I'm exposing that deployment. Okay, good. So I already have in the cluster. Now, I said we will launch two experiments concurrently. That's what we're going to be doing right now. So let me launch the litmus chaos experiment. Oh, that's not good. Let's try it again. Good. So what we've done here is that we have taken this experiment and package it up as a Helm chart so that it can be easily configured and launched into the cluster. That's what we just did. And we have launched it, launched the litmus experiment into the cluster. And let's also launch the iterate experiment in the cluster. All right, so we are also launching the iterate experiment. So there is a little variation of the iterate experiment here. To notice, we are checking the deployment, we are checking the service, and we are also checking the chaos engine that is running the chaos experiment, right? So we want the iterate experiment to wait until the chaos experiment starts and then kick off its load testing. And this is how we accomplish that synchronization between those two different experiments. So going back to the litmus experiment, what we just specified was that, you know, pick a pod that has this label on it, and every five seconds kill it, and do this for the next one hour. That's all this litmus experiment is doing. All right, so let's observe the experiment. I can use just plain kubectl to see how far the litmus experiment is. It's still running, which is good. That's what we wanted. The chaos experiment is running. We can check what the situation for the iterate experiment using the iterate assert command that we have used before. So this is interesting. The experiment completed. The experiment itself does not have any failures. It ran from start to finish. But the SLOs are not satisfied because obviously we are killing the pods and we are asking that latency needs to remain low and tail latency needs to remain low. That's not going to happen as expected. So the SLOs are not satisfied. So let's take a closer look at what happened. If we take a look at the report, um, we will get a better picture of the experiment. Let's look at the text report. So we can already tell that the 99th percentile latency is off the charts. It's like 3,000 milliseconds. Whereas the experiment we specified actually wanted much lesser. So in the experiment specification, in the iterate experiment specification, we said the, night, the tail latency needs to be within 100 milliseconds. That's what was the SLO requirement, whereas this thing is off the charts. So no wonder it's not working. So let's iterate. And this time, we're going to scale up the application. We scale new deployment configuration for the application. So let's go ahead and give the same experiment a try. All right, so this experiment is getting launched. And while it is, while it's in the process of, you know, being launched into the cluster, 
Um, you can also take a look at the logs from an either experiment. So if you want to get a closer look, if you want to debug an experiment, for example, something went wrong in an experiment, you can get logs from an experiment easily and take a look at what's going on. So let's try that. And it's simply a log subcommand. So things are, this is interesting. So it, it tries to check, I guess, the, um, the uh, readiness condition for a deployment. It was not true. It tried again. It became true. And it checked all the readiness conditions. It's all good. And so it started the HTTP task for the actual load test. That's what you're seeing from the logs. Essentially, you see how far the experiment has progressed, which tasks are completed, and which tasks are you know, in flight. And if there's a problem with the task, you get to see the problem with the task also as part of the logs. So going back to our experiment, let's uh, try to assert the SLO conditions and see if we um, had a better luck this time. Oh, perfect. So the experiment completed, it has no change. And all the SLOs are satisfied, as you would expect, because we scaled up the application. Now it's suddenly more resilient. So even in the midst of this part chaos, which is still going on, the application is able to satisfy the SLOs. So hopefully you have a sense of how easy it is not just to run a single experiment, but also these different you know, joint combined experiments resiliency experiments where you are you know, doing a chaos injection along with SLO validation or performance validation. It's easy to author them, it's easy to execute them, and it's easy to get results back from them and clean them up in the cluster. That's the model of the story. So we badly touched the capabilities of the tools that I demonstrated today. So I'll quickly you know, go through some of the other experimentation features that may be useful in your setup. Um, in the case of Iterate, first of all, you can use metrics, not just you know, metrics that are generated, built into Iterate, but also metrics that you may be collecting in a database. So you can ask Iterate to fetch those metrics, for example, metrics from Prometheus or Sysdig or wherever where you're collecting metrics for your application. You can fetch those metrics and do a validation based on those metrics. Uh, that's one of the built-in tasks in Iterate. You can also do multi-loop experiments. So we just did a single loop experiment from end to end, start to finish, just all the tasks went sequentially one after the other, but you can repeat these tasks periodically uh, in a multi-loop experiment, and Iterate lets you do that. And what's more, you can also say things like, you know, after 10 loops of the experiment, send a notification to the Slack channel or this GitHub uh, receiver uh, about the status of the experiment. So there is support for notifications with conditions. Um, you can also use the iterate GitHub action, so there is no need to launch the experiment you know, manually using the command line. You can bake it in as part of a GitHub action if you want. And uh, because the GitHub action essentially downloads the CLI, so all the commands that were available to you using the CLI are now available to you using the CLI within the GitHub action. So one other thing is Iterate is meant to be extensible. It's built to work with not just Kubernetes, Kubernetes native resources, but also custom Example, there are examples of Iterate working with uh, Knative, which is a serverless resource. It's a machine learning resource. Selden, which is also a machine learning resource. You also saw an example of the readiness task working with the chaos engine resource in the resiliency experiment. Litness is also a very mature project. It's a CNCF incubating project. And uh, do check out the Litness project page for all the awesome features that you can use. The heart of Litness is the, its chaos center. And uh, in particular, the chaos hub in Litmus has you know, these thousands of different curated, community curated chaos experiments. But fundamentally, 50 different types or 60 different types of experiments, but you know, thousands of variations of those experiments are curated as part of the hub, readily used anywhere for your setup. 
So what next? Um, first of all, please try the demo. They are really easy to try. And you can also orient the demos to your app because it's really easy to configure these experiments and you know, point it to your apps. And if you have questions, comments, I'm around today, tomorrow, throughout KubeCon. And also, please feel free to chat us up at uh, LinkedIn. And my, I, my handle is SriyamCT, and my co-speaker is I speak code with a zero. And also, please visit our you know, project pages, and uh, you can join our community, engage with us using Slack, GitHub, everywhere. Thank you very much.